Here's 14 Notion features you probably didn't know about. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to learn more Notion tips and tricks. Tip number one is that you can actually change the style of the bullet points within Notion. So you've probably seen a bullet point list like this in Notion before with these circular bullets, but did you know that you can actually change the styling of these? Yep, so you can actually change the style of your bullet points to this empty circle one, or you can change it to the square bullet point like this. So to change the style, you simply just want to click on the six dots next to your bullet point list. And you'll see this option here that says list format, and you can actually select one of the formats. So the default option is actually the disc. I don't know why they have them listed as two different ones because they are the same, but you could select here circle, which brings the empty circle, or you could select square to get the square. Tip number two is that you can actually add a whiteboard into Notion. So this is the whiteboard feature. So as you can see, you can simply just draw on here. You can also use lines. So this could be useful if you want to show someone a layout, for example, and you just want to draw, for example, a layout of, I don't know, an app or a website. It's quite easy to draw on here. And you can also add text as well with the text box. So as you can see, it just works like a standard whiteboard. So this whiteboard is actually a widget. So what you want to do is go to this website here, whiteboard.com. This is how it's spelled. And you simply just want to copy the link in the browser. Then back over in Notion, you simply just want to type forward slash embed and grab this embed block here and simply just paste in the link and click embed link. And that's then gonna bring up your whiteboard. You can make it bigger or smaller by using this bar here. And that's it, you can simply just get started. Feature number three is using Notion's built-in image editor. So not many people know that you can actually crop and change the aspect ratio of an image directly within Notion. So I've just uploaded this image here. And if you hover over it, you'll now see this crop image button. This is a relatively new feature. So if you click on that, as you can see, it'll allow you to crop the image as you like. And another really cool feature is if you actually click this little button up here, it will allow you to select an aspect ratio. So you can just click on here, for example, and then move this around. They have a square option. And one of my favorite ones is that they do actually have a circle option, which is really cool. So it looks a little bit like a profile picture. So let's just crop it in here and click save. And you now have this. So this is great if you're doing some sort of like company profile or a resume or anything like that. You can save yourself a bit of time generating a circular image like this. Feature number four is all about the calendar view options. So you've probably seen the built-in Notion calendar calendar database view, which looks a little bit like this, but there are actually some customization options that not many people know about. So if you actually just click on the three dots up here and then select layout, you'll see a few different options here. So the first one is that you can actually show the calendar as a weekly view rather than a monthly view. So if I click on that, this is what that now looks like. And if we once again, just click on here, select layout, you can also choose to show or not show weekends. So let's switch weekends off and let's just change it back to the monthly view. So that would look like this. So obviously this would work a lot better if you use Notion just for work and you don't want to see weekends. Feature number five is that you can actually now hide these page icons on Notion databases. So if you've used databases for a while, then you may sometimes notice that this little page icon appears all the time. So this is just a to-do list that I've set up, but you can actually switch these off if you'd prefer not to see the icons. So to do that, you can click on the three dots here, select layout, and you can actually toggle this show page icon off and it will simply get rid of the icons. There is also an option to get rid of the vertical lines on databases as well that not many people know about. So if you switch that off, as you can see, it simply just gets rid of the vertical lines within the tables. So it provides a cleaner look. So just before we jump back into the tutorial, I just want to mention that my new second brain template is now available on my store. It's a super advanced all-in-one productivity system. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested. So that's all back to the tutorial. The next notion feature is that you can bulk change icons within databases. So I actually only discovered this relatively recently and it really has changed my life because I used to spend a lot of time adding icons to pages. So if you wanted to bulk add an icon to all of the pages within this database, you could simply click on this button here to select them all or alternatively Alternatively, you could just highlight the pages that you want to select. And once you've selected the pages that you want to change, you can click on the six dots here, select icons and simply pick an icon. Let's just go with this pin icon here and that will then add it to all of them all at once. And we could then add, for example, a different one on here. Let's just do the same thing and select this check mark. It's as easy as that. It's really, really quick and will save you a lot of time. The next feature is that you can add property descriptions to databases. 
So here again is that to-do list database that I used in the previous example. And as you can see, I've added this time property into the database. Now it might not be immediately obvious what exactly you're supposed to put in this box. Is it in minutes or is it hours? What do I mean by time? So another relatively new notion feature is that you can actually now add descriptions to properties within databases. So this is particularly great if you're sharing your notion workspaces with other people so that they can easily understand what is supposed to be inputted into this column. So if we want to add a description for this property, I could simply click on the column and you'll see this little eye icon appear here. So if I hover over there, it says add property description. So if I click on it, it's going to allow me to add a description. So let's put, for example, the time it takes to complete the task in hours. So once you've added a description, you'll now see this little eye icon appear on the property next to the title. And if you hover over it, as you can see, it will simply display the description. So it just makes using databases, especially with other people, a lot easier. The next feature is relation property view options. So let me just show you the example that I've set up here. So here is that task database that I've been using throughout the video as an example. As you can see, it simply just lists all the tasks that I have to do here. Now below, I've also set up a projects database, so I've listed individual projects and their status. And I would now like to connect each of these individual tasks to the project that they relate to. So to do that, if you're familiar with Notion, you may know that we can add a relation property. So to do that, let's click on the plus symbol. We're gonna grab this relation property and it's gonna ask me to link to a database. So I actually want to link to our projects in goals database. I'm gonna leave the options as they are and I'm just gonna click add relation. So as you can see, we now have this new column that is related to our projects database. So if I click on here, I can actually now select which project this task relates to. Now, the feature that I want to show you is that you can actually show multiple different properties on this little panel here, which might make it easier to actually pick which project it's related to. So if you click on the three dots here, as you can see, it's now allowing me to actually show the other properties within our projects database. So it might actually be useful to see the status of the project. So if I click that to unhide it, as you can see, the status of the project is now visible. So this might make it easier for me to pick which one it's related to because I'm probably not going to have any tasks related to projects that are complete. So I'm most likely going to be looking at these in progress projects. So let's just select this one as an example. So that's a really handy feature that makes using relation properties a lot easier. The next feature is that you can now change the button colors within Notion. So I've set up a simple button. If you're familiar with Notion, you've probably seen something like this before. So this one, if I click it, it's just gonna add my morning routine to-do list. So I can simply check this off and just delete it once it's complete. So recently Notion added a new feature where you can actually now change the color of the button to customize it even further. So to do that, you can click on the six dots here next to it, select color, and you can change the text color firstly up here. Let's go with purple as an example would look like that. And you can also change the background color if you'd prefer. So let's go with a blue background. One thing I've noticed is that you can't change the background color and the text color. It's kind of an either or. So as you can see, I've got the blue background, but if I now go on here and select to have pink text, it will remove the blue background. So it's an either or, but it does add a bit more customization than we had previously. The next feature is using the ID property within databases. So the ID property has been around for a while, but I feel like I never see anyone on YouTube using it, but it does have a lot of really useful use cases. So this is the projects database example that I used just a moment ago. So these are some different projects that you may be working on. So if I click on here to add a new property, let's scroll down and grab this ID property. So what this property does is it adds a unique ID to every item within your database. So this can be really useful if you want to specifically reference something within your database database. Sometimes things might have similar names or you might not know exactly which item or which page someone is referring to. So you can actually just reference the unique ID instead. You can search via the ID. So if I want number five, as you can see, it's just going to bring up that one. And you can also add prefixes as well. So if we just click on here and edit the property, you can add a prefix in here. So you might just want it to be something like project and you can then add that prefix. And as you can see, it will now look like this. It's completely up to you. You don't need to add one, but you can if you like. This is particularly useful if you work within a team. So you can just say project six, for example. And if you add something new to the database, it will automatically add that ID for you. So you never have to add this yourself. It will automatically assign an ID for you. The next feature is using the arrow buttons to move between pages within a database. So here is again, that task database. If I actually just open up one of these pages, 
pages you'll see this little side peek and you can just write some ideas in here now if you want to then move to the next task I see a lot of people clicking back onto here and then opening up the next page but that's quite a few clicks there is actually a much quicker way to move between the different pages it's simply just using these arrows up here so if I click the down arrow it's simply just going to take me directly to the next page so you can go up and down as you please it's really really quick and handy the next feature is clicking on the today button to jump to today on the calendar so here again is a calendar that I showed you earlier so if you are on a future month let's just go ahead into the future and you want to go back to today I often see a lot of people just clicking the arrows until they get back to today but you can actually just click on the today button here and it will jump straight back to today on the calendar so again this is just a little quick easy feature that will save you a bit of time the next feature is displaying a useful statistic next to your groups now that might not make any sense at the moment so I'm gonna explain what I mean by that so firstly you can actually group databases based on a property within the database so let's say that I wanted to group these tasks based on if they're a work task or a personal task so to do that I can click on the three dots up here let's select group and it's gonna ask me what I want to group the database by so let's group them based on the tags and as you can see it's now adding a little toggle here and it's grouping the tasks based on personal or works so that's exactly what I wanted now you'll see that this number appears here next to the task now what this number is doing it's actually just counting how many tasks you have under this tag so obviously I've got three tasks here so that's why it's displaying three but you can actually change this to display any piece of information that you would find useful obviously it has to be based on the data that you have within the table so if I click on here as you can see it's gonna ask me if I want to count something if I want to work out the percentage or some other statistics like this now in this case I think it could be useful to maybe count the total amount of time that I will be spending on all of these tasks so if I click on here we're gonna go with statistics and I'm gonna go with the sum and it's gonna pull up any properties that are a number property because they're obviously the only ones that I could sum together uh, which includes the time property so if I click on that so it's gonna add together all of these time properties here to give me a total so I can now see that I'm gonna spend two and a half hours in total on personal tasks today and nine and a half hours on work tasks as I said there are a ton of different things you could do here so you could instead work out the average amount of time and that would display here there are so many different options as you can see to work out different things that you'd find useful and the final feature is creating a sticky note so this is actually one of my favorites it's a cool little feature that you can place on for example a home page or any page within your workspace and you can simply just click on here and jot down any notes that you might have throughout the day so to set up one of these for yourself we're going to use the call out block so I'm just going to type in forward slash slash call out and select this block here and that's going to display like this the first thing we're going to do is change the color so to make it look like a sticky note I usually go for this yellow color but you can obviously have it any color that you like so you want to select the background color here so I'm going to go with yellow next we're going to change the icon so if you click on here we're going to use the pin icon like this Next, what you want to do is place your cursor here, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and just hit enter a few times to make it a bit longer. And if you want to make it a bit thinner, you can add columns. That's how I've gotten this one to look more like a square. So if I just type in forward slash column up here and grab the two column block, I'm simply just gonna click on the six dots, drag and drop it into that column just to make it a bit smaller. And you can then use this bar here to play around with the size, but I think a square looks quite right. And you can obviously just then type in your notes in here another handy thing that you can do with this is you can actually turn it into a synced block which means that you can paste the synced block on every page within your notion space and it will then update if you update one of them so let me just show you how that works so if I click on here select turn into and then select synced block you're now going to see that it has this red outline which indicates that it's a synced block so if I just click on here and then select copy and sync you can paste the link to this block on any page within notion so it doesn't have to be the same page but just for the purpose of showing you how it works I'm just going to paste it next to it but you could paste this on a completely different page now if I update one of these it's going to update every single one so if I just delete what I have in here as you can see it's deleting it on here as well and if I update it it's going to update on there as well so it's really handy if you just want to jot down notes throughout the day you're not going to lose them if you've put it on one particular page it's going to update on every single page and that's it you can check out all of my pre-made notion templates over on my store including this super advanced second brain template which is an all-in-one productivity system I'll leave a link in the description box below and if you did find this video useful then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I post new notion tutorials like this one every week